Big news coming out of the Manhattan DA's office today, my former office where I worked for almost three decades and I was the chief assistant, which is the number two there. Big news, Donald Trump is expected to be indicted today, Monday or Wednesday of this week. This is finally happening, everybody. Donald Trump is gonna be the first former president to be indicted criminally. So what do we, why do we know that it's happening uh, Monday or Wednesday and not Tuesday? Well, we know that the grand jury is only sitting a few days a week, which is very customary in special grand juries. What happens is this is not a regular grand jury. Uh, oftentimes with long-term investigations, it, it is routine to uh, have a special grand jury different from like what's in the Fulton County grand, special grand jury where they can only do a report. These special grand juries just sit for longer periods of time to hear a discrete case because grand juries only sit for either two weeks or four weeks. And, and if you think a case is going to take longer, you call for a special grand jury. Normally they sit for three days a week and it's usually a half day. So either mornings or afternoons. And based on when we know Michael Cohen testified, which was on a Monday and a Wednesday, we know that those are the two days, Monday and Wednesday afternoon, we know that those are the two days that the grand jury is sitting and perhaps a third day, whether it's a Thursday or Friday. And so that's why we expect it to be either today, Monday or Wednesday. So what's happening next? Michael, Michael Cohen's former attorney, uh, Mr. Costello, it was uh, seen going into the DA's office today. And why is he testifying if it's not someone that the prosecution would call? Well, the reason is because once a defendant knows about a grand jury proceeding, or, or I, shouldn't, I should say a target or a possible defendant, which is what Donald Trump is, they can also ask that certain evidence uh, certain evidence be presented to the grand jury. They have that right to request that. So in addition, if you recall, Donald Trump was given the opportunity to testify. That's, that's one way they can present evidence and he declined that. However, he is asking that other evidence go before the grand jury and that's in the form of Mr. Costello. So the way that works is a prosecutor will then go into the grand jury room and they will ask the grand jury, they will say, that the, um, the, the defendant in this case has requested uh, that the following witness be called before the grand jury. Would you like to hear from that person? And the grand jury votes yes or no. If they vote yes, Mr. Costello will go in and testify. If they vote no, then I expect that they will go straight into charging, uh, which is means they, which means the prosecutor informs them of what the law is that they need to vote on, and then they will vote, and that's that. So if, however, Mr. Costello does go in, I suspect that that could take some time this afternoon, and then the prosecution may choose to call Michael Cohen, who is on standby as a rebuttal witness to rebut whatever it is that Costello is going to say. Now, it's been reported that one of the things uh, he's going to talk about is he's going to try to uh, call Michael Cohen unstable and talk about his mental acuity and really try to just disparage him and make him look like an unstable, unreliable witness. Fine, that's fine. The prosecutor knows how to deal with that and I'm sure it's no news to anybody, uh, but it's a good thing if he testifies uh, for the prosecution, I think, because what it does is it only makes the prosecution's case stronger in that the prosecutor can see what are the defenses? What are they going to say? How are they going to attack witnesses? Um, and it's a way of also locking them into a defense, right? And locking them into a particular issue. So there is no downside uh, really, except unless he has some kind of magic, you know, evidence that exculpates Donald Trump. If he has that, if he has, you know, something like that, I suppose the grand jury could decide not to indict the case. But this seems like a Hail Mary for from the Trump side, uh, trying to convince the grand jury not to indict him. Law enforcement has been ready. It's, they've reported for several days now that they are completely ready. They're coordinating uh, in New York how to um, deal with the fact that Trump is calling for protests.
I mean, he's, he's asking people to protest his arrest. And it's very similar to his requests uh, on January 6th as he, when, when, he, when he called upon his supporters to um, massively protest uh, the, um, the election counting uh, and Mike Pence in Congress. Now, this is absolutely ridiculous to request protesters to come here and potentially disrupt a, uh, a criminal prosecution, and it's irresponsible of him. Now, I am not at all worried that the NYPD, in conjunction with the Secret Service, the courts, the DA's office, FBI, Joint Terrorism Task Force, and, and every other law enforcement entity in New York, I am not at all concerned that they cannot handle whatever it is that these individuals uh, are going to bring to the table. New York City is not, um, f it's not foreign to New York City to have mass protests, even violent protests. Uh, we've, we've had them for many, 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 many years, and there is no place I feel safer or more confident than New York City when it comes to New York City's law, New York City law enforcement's ability to protect people and to keep everybody safe. What I am concerned about and what is very upsetting to me is how Donald Trump thinks he is above the law. He thinks the law doesn't apply to him. He's calling into question this case. He's calling it a political prosecution. What he's doing, however, there are there are a dozen trials going on right now at the Manhattan courts, right? Because that's what that's what they do. They have trials. There are people who are being charged and trying to have their day in court. In fact, there are two murder cases where they're supposed to sum up on Tuesday. How are the jurors going to get to court? How are the jurors going to get through all of his his supporters? He is trying to disrupt the criminal justice system because he doesn't think the rule of law applies to him. He thinks this is a nothing case, that it's politically motivated. But frankly, if this was, if, if Alvin Bragg was politically motivated to bring a charge against Donald Trump, why didn't he bring the case that was handed to him from Cy Vance that the two senior prosecutors who publicly resigned said was ready to go? They thought it was wrapped in a bow and ready to go. And in fact, when they left, one of them wrote a book and is throwing a very public temper tantrum about the fact that his uh, his judgment wasn't um, wasn't trusted and taken into consideration uh, when Alvin Bragg said he wanted more evidence. Well, frankly, if this was a political prosecution or a political persecution the way they're trying to say with George Soros, et cetera, then then Alvin Bragg would have brought that case. But that is not the case. What, what Alvin Bragg does is what every other prosecutor does in this country without fear or favor. He follows the evidence wherever it leads. And you know what? You look around this country and you will see our prisons and jails and our and courthouses filled with people of color who are being charged with much less cr lesser crimes than, than, than this one for misdemeanors and felonies that are much, much lesser crimes than this one. But you know what? The, the law applies to people of privilege as well, like Donald Trump. And he cannot get away with doing this because just because he was president. By not prosecuting him for this, you would be treating him differently than everybody else. So it's the opposite. And so, but this is huge news. He is going to be indicted, or I should say, the grand jury is gonna vote, and, and hopefully they'll, they'll vote in indictment because as far as I can tell, uh, Alvin Bragg believes that he can prove this case beyond a reasonable doubt, and nobody is above the law, even him, and nobody should be intimidated to bring a case because the bully, Donald Trump, is trying to intimidate uh, the, the prosecutors from doing their job. And, you know, prosecutors, I, and I myself, when I used to prosecute violent gangs, Sometimes there were death threats that happened, and sometimes they would intimidate witnesses. They would intimidate prosecutors, uh, and and you have to you have to still put your head down and do your job. You do not you do not ever 
ever make a decision based on threats, based on fear, or based on politics. And that's exactly what's happening here. And Donald Trump doesn't like it, which is why he is pulling out all the stops. And, and you know, last week he said, I, I'm going to be arrested on Tuesday. Well, there was no, nobody said he was going to be arrested on Tuesday. That was just his way of both inciting violence and trying to bait the prosecutors into telling him what is going on and when, because he doesn't like not being in control. So he does it again, and he continues to just say things that aren't true. And and it's this is going to come to an end very, very soon and come to a head very soon, uh, as soon as the grand jury votes and decides whether or not to charge the former president with a crime. Now. Just to be clear and to remind everyone, what the grand jury does is secret, and any indictment of the president, the former president, will be sealed because this is a, an indictment before there is an arrest. And so the law in New York keeps that information secret until he is brought before a court where charges will be, the charges, um, will be uh, told to him and he'll be arraigned and he'll ask to enter a plea, which I'm sure he'll say not guilty. And at that point, that's when the indictment is unsealed. Unless, of course, the indictment is, um, or the fact of the indictment is leaked. And the one person I would expect that you would get this information from first is the former president, because Mr. Trump likes to, um, likes to, uh, call himself a victim and get the information out there first to try to win in the court of public opinion rather than speaking in court, which is where prosecutors are um, permitted to speak and the only place that they speak. So what will happen, let's say, let's say he is indicted today. The first thing that will happen is the, the prosecutors will take um, an indictment and have it signed by the foreperson of the grand jury. And then they will file it under seal with the court and uh, also file what's known as an arrest warrant. That's just common paperwork that will happen in, uh, in an indictment situation like this. And then the next thing that will happen is what is customary in, a ca in cases like this, not treating Donald Trump any differently than anybody else, is they give him an opportunity to surrender. The only time they would go out and try and arrest him without giving him an opportunity to surrender would be A, if they think he's going to flee the jurisdiction, or B, if they think evidence can be destroyed. I don't know that either of those things are the case here. There's also a logistical problem with, in with arresting him uh, in before giving him an opportunity to surrender, which is he's not in the jurisdiction of New York right now, he's in Florida. So law enforcement in New York does not have jurisdiction to, to arrest him in Florida. They'd have to coordinate with local law enforcement. And then Governor DeSantis would have to uh, agree to send him to Governor Hochul, who's the New York governor, and then he would come here, but uh, he would be extradited here. But I, I don't know how that would play out given how political uh, Florida is and the governor is down there. So, so I think they're going to give him an opportunity to surrender, which he would come and he would be uh, processed. He would be photographed. He would be fingerprinted. He may or may not be handcuffed. He would be read as Miranda warnings. Uh, all of that would occur um, at, uh, at the Manhattan DA's office, which is um, in lower Manhattan, attached to the courts where he will be arraigned. We don't know yet who the judge is going to be, but my guess would be it's Juan Mershon, since he's already handled uh, the Trump Organization um, matter as well as uh, Steve Bannon. So, but who knows? You know, it's up to the court to decide who to assign. And then he would enter a plea of not guilty and the case would proceed from there like every other case. There's nothing special about this case, nor should there be anything special about this case just because he was a former president. He should be treated like every other person who breaks the law in this country. One other just small possibility is that he, that, that it is determined that, uh, that it would be too much of a circus or a security risk to do this arraignment in person and they might request that he be arraigned uh, via video or remote. Um, 
that's uh, that's complicated. Whether that can be done where where there's already a felony indictment, uh, so so that is something that they'd have to um, they'd have to uh, sort out, or whether he could be um, arraigned in another location, say at Trump Tower. Uh, you know, sometimes when when people when like let's say a defendant is in the hospital uh, because they are you know injured. Uh, but they need to be arraigned. Sometimes um, what happens is a prosecutor, a defense attorney, and a judge travel to the hospital and arraign the person there. So I suppose that could also happen if for some reason uh, people thought that was a good thing to do. But I doubt either of those things will happen because Donald Trump wants the biggest spectacle he can get. He will perp walk himself so that he can show that he's a victim of political persecution and all the other things he says. He will give press conferences and he will make this the biggest show uh, that he can make it. And he'll use it to try and uh, inflame and incite his base. And that that's what I think is going to happen. But big, big, big news. And uh, coming out of the Manhattan DA's office, I expect to see an indictment today or Wednesday. Thank you so much for joining. I'm Karen Friedman Agnifilo with uh, Legal AF. Our blue wall stopped the red wave and election deniers got denied election. That's why we're celebrating with the new Democracy Prevails team. We've got lots of work to do, but we should all be proud that when democracy was tested, democracy prevailed. You've earned this. Don't wait. Get yours right now at store.midastouch.com. That's store.midastouch.com.